What's up YouTube? So today I want to talk about how to DJ in Bitwig, how to set up your own kind of template and how to prepare your tracks so that you could easily create a kind of DJ set in Bitwig. Quickly, I just want to discuss what this is not. I don't want to spark a debate on what real DJing is about beat matching and all that kind of thing. I do believe beat matching is absolutely a good skill to know. But that being said, with modern technology, newcomers coming into the game, I think it's important more so as an accessibility thing for more people just to be able to know, you know, how to mix tracks as opposed to the kind of, you know, how to do it on vinyl because so few times uh, newcomers in the game will be faced with a set of turntables and have to mix on those. I think, especially with CDJs having stuff like sync and all sorts of stuff nowadays, it's just a little bit easier. Um, so I just don't want to spark that whole debate today. What I do want to show you guys is how to mix tracks and how to prepare them and how to pull off a kind of semi DJ style set in a program like Bitwig. You can apply the exact same techniques to Ableton or whatever software you're using. Anyway, without blabbering on too much, let's dive in and have a look. So I want to start with the absolute basics, how I set up my kind of mixer channels. I also want to discuss a bunch of really basic kind of transitions. For those who might not know anything about DJing, this is going to start off really basic. For those who maybe are a little bit more advanced, just stick with me till a little bit later in the video when I start showing you some more advanced stuff. I'm going to show you guys how I've prepared the tracks and everything. But the first thing that I want to discuss is the, the kind of mixer, how I've set up the Bitwig mixer to act kind of like a DJ mixer. And how I've done that is using uh, an instance of SnapHeap. What I've done, the reason I've chosen SnapHeap is because you're able to call up two instances, like two windows of it and have them side by side. So we can have deck B and then we can have deck A on this side. And it's a lot easier to, for example, do the mixing, uh, lows, mids, highs, and that kind of thing. Also, the Kilohertz three band EQ is pretty much the cleanest three band EQ that I've heard. One thing though, is it doesn't, it, 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 it only goes to minus 16, if I'm not mistaken, but that's not a problem. So I've just like stacked them up and put a macro on. This macro goes, uh, when it's at 100%, it goes to zero. That's one thing to remember about a lot of these setups. I've also set up a gain module here, and this is basically doing the volume mixer. So the reason I've done it inside SnapHeap is so that you can go, is so that you can go all the way to 100%, um, like slam mix it up. And the problem is when you do that with the Bitwig fader over here, you'll actually be gaining plus six on the fader and then clipping the output and stuff. So, I mean, I do have a limiter on the output and it's not such a big problem in 32 bit and all sorts of stuff like that. But I just think particularly for um, DJing, you know, when we have a track that's already mastered or whatever the case may be, it's important that you don't want to change too much about like the volumes and the gain staging. And I just find being able to do this uh, with a kind of like a uh, thing that's just bam, 100%, uh, it's just so much easier. Specifically, if you're assigning them to MIDI controllers. Often when I'm DJ mixing, I'm not gonna be boosting the lows on each of these tracks because they're already mastered. All I'm gonna do is use like the lows uh, and transition between one track to another. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of transitions uh, shortly. Another thing that I've added to these channels is a, a native Bitwig plugin called Time Shift. So this may or may not be a, a potentially be a thing for you. I guess it depends on what sort of tracks you're mixing. But sometimes when you have like a kick that's very transient and maybe a kick that's not very transient and you're trying to mix them together, often you have this weird kind of phasey thing that happens. And just being able to shift the time of one of the decks is a very cool trick to be able to fix that kind of like phasey knock when you're trying to mix two tracks together where the kicks don't quite work. You know, when you're doing it with CDJs or with vinyls, you just nudge the track a little bit, but you know, we don't have the ability to nudge in uh, Bitwig or Ableton or something like that. However, you can just time shift it. So just remember that because um, when I'm doing these transitions, you may hear, for example, a part where you're hearing the click and you can just kind of shift it a little bit. You could also potentially set up a crossfader here and crossfade between the tracks, but I don't necessarily like to use a crossfader specifically when using when you're mixing very bass heavy music like Psytrance or any bass music. I prefer to actually do the transitions on the EQs and I'll explain that whole thing, but I just want to discuss another couple of things with the mixer. 
so when DJing, it's quite an important thing to cue the track that's coming up. And what that is, is to be able to listen to the upcoming track on a pair of headphones before you actually start mixing it in. And how we can set up a cue channel in Bitwig is actually pretty easy. So you can use the send effect channel and literally just assign this master output to a different output. So if you've got a sound card that has two separate outputs that can be assigned separately, like headphones and uh, your master output, then you can just assign this here. I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to wear headphones for this just because um, this is more of just an explanation. But you would just assign it here to headphone output or output number two or whatever. And then this turning this would just allow you to hear the channel before actually mixing it in. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is set these to pre. And so what that does is it allows you to actually hear what's happening before the effects. Okay, so I wanna show you guys how I generally transition from one track to another. And what I'm gonna do here is I've actually got a couple of, uh, let's call them cue points, but it's like different start positions of these tracks. So let's say for example, I can start the track at the intro. So this is another important thing here, but I'm gonna get into this a little bit later when I discuss um, how to, how I kind of prep everything. But when I press play, and then it'll kind of loop indefinitely until I change a setting. So now let's just imagine we've got the two mixer decks in front of us. We've got deck A and deck B. What we want to do is turn down the volume of deck B. We want to turn down the volume of deck B before we start playing it. And then you'll see here, I've actually, like I said, I've got these different cue points. Right at the end of the bar there, we can press play. And you'll see that it's, it triggers the channel. And now it's actually playing the loop because I've actually set it to loop the sample and now we can start fading it in if we want or we can go back here and turn loop off and then let this channel play So now, say for example, I want to transition from one deck to the other. This is not probably not going to be the cleanest transition because I'm trying to explain things like while I'm doing it. What I want to do is I want to turn the lows all the way down on the upcoming deck and the mids down quite a bit and then slowly start fading in the volume. And then the idea is to kind of replace the EQs. So slowly turn down the mids on this one while the mids turn up on this one. And then the trick is with the lows to get a very quick sweep. So turn the lows on deck A down as you turn the lows up on deck B. So it definitely helps to have MIDI controllers in this kind of example, but you don't technically need them. Okay, so just to show you guys again, I'm going to transition back. I actually just want to loop this.
anyways, you guys get the idea. Not the cleanest transitions, but whatever. The idea is um, to not have the lows playing on both channels at the same time. You kind of transition between those. And generally speaking, if the tracks are kind of synced up in tempo and they kind of sound nicely aligned, then you won't need to worry about too much other than that, except for, I, I kind of find that often just fine tuning the mids a little bit in between those transitions can help to just, so that it's not so sudden, you get a more kind of like, slower transition anyway that's the kind of basics of how to transition between them how i set up the mixer and everything like that let's look at prepping the tracks okay so here i've got some tracks which i still need to kind of prepare uh in this project let me show you guys how i would generally do it so i'd drag in the audio file so what we can do here is we can just make sure that uh the tempo over here is the tempo of the track and also what I like to make sure is that it's set to repitch mode. So this acts very much like a CDJ in that when you change the tempo, it kind of like pitches the sound down. I find most of the other ones start to sound very granular or you kind of lose the transient of the kick, whereas repitch kind of sounds the most natural to me, or at least maybe it's because I'm used to the sound of CDJs changing the tempo and stuff, I don't know. So I generally just make sure the tempo is correct there. I don't generally change tempo all that much, so I mean, it, I guess it doesn't really matter too much, but anyway, those two things I make sure of. And then here, what I wanna do is just make sure that the start point over here is right at the beginning and then I like to loop the intro so I can kind of start wherever I want in the set you know if I do want to start with this track then I can do so but here what I do is I just make sure that the end of the loop is like here at the kick and then the start point of the track is like right at the beginning here so what that allows me to do is press start and then it'll start from the right at the beginning of the track and then loop here over and over again so that when I end the loop it'll be seamless into the beginning of the track does that make sense? So then we can start some cue points, for example, like I'm just going to duplicate this. And here I want a cue point for right at the beginning, like the first kick and bass of the track, this one here. So that's in case we wanna mix in without the intro. And then we can just align that like that. So we've got the loop on, loop on, cool. And we can just go ahead and maybe create another cue point like halfway through and one at the end here. So then let's just duplicate this again. And then we can move, just move the uh, start uh, or the loop points to wherever we want it to go. Let's say here. Sometimes this shifts off. I guess it depends on how you produce the tracks. You know, if you do these kind of breaks, which are slightly off the grid and stuff. So this might or might not work. We can see, I mean, if it's slightly off, then I can show you guys how that time shift thing works. And there we go. That should, that should all be okay. Another really nifty thing that you can set up is a thing called follow actions or next actions. Sorry, follow actions is in Ableton. So next actions is what they call it in Bitwig. What this allows you to do is say, for example, you've got a loop and you can say loop like eight times and then move to the next clip. So you would say play next. So then we can say when you play this, it will go eight times and then play the next clip or for eight beats and then the next clip, eight bars, sorry. So that's also a very handy way of setting up a track where you could have like different loop points and you could kind of jump in wherever and it would still kind of play sequentially. Um, 
so you can potentially set up your tracks like that i don't really i kind of just like i know my tracks quite well so i don't really need to do that much um I, I tend to find when you're switching the looping on and off sometimes there can be those timing issues whereas um if you kind of use it more as like uh, where you have the looping off and you just use these play points as like cue points for the different parts in the track, it's a little bit easier. Um, you don't have to have these massive projects and stuff with all these different kind of things going on. But anyway, you guys get the picture. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be posting this snappy preset to my Patreon for my $5 supporters. Maybe I'll post uh, the this Bitwig template as well, even though it's super simple. It is basically just two of these uh, snap heaps. Uh, on the audio channel but yeah as always i hope you guys enjoyed that let me know what you think in the comments if you haven't yet consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that like button yeah see you guys next time cheers